Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. It sure is Kevin. Hi, I'm Ralph behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And here we are. Um, we've got some wonderful cannoli shells here. Um, uh, a while ago, we were with our dear friends, Tommy and Char, um, who are in the thumb. Uh, up where the cottage is and we spent a whole afternoon making I don't know a couple hundred cannoli shells uh, cannoli shells are one of those things where it's a lot of work so when you make them you might as well make as many as you can maybe tell folks what a cannoli is it's an Italian pastry it's an Italian pastry uh, so what you do is you make uh, a dough uh, you cut it into a round and then you actually form the circle around a metal. Some people use wood, but uh, they use a metal. It almost looks like a pipe um, to hold its shape. And then you drop it into deep fat. Hot oil. Hot oil. Cannoli and actually means little tube. And, it, and here it is. And it fries up cr very crisp and very flaky. And then you fill this with some sort of filling. Usually uh, it can be made with um, uh, ricotta cheese, which is what we're doing, uh, mascarpone cheese, which is another kind of really creamy, soft Italian cheese. Or a hot dog. Or, <laughs> you could put a hot dog in here. You could, um, um, some people use a variation on a pudding, Okay, mm. also for a filling. But it's usually rich, custard. rich and creamy uh -huh. and sweet. People and it is. Love it. It's because you have these. So they make their um, shells. Their shells, their dough actually has a little <laughs> blackberry wine in it. Um, and some cinnamon too, as I recall. But they're wonderful. Next time we do this with them, we will film it. We didn't think to bring the camera when we did it. But we made the shells, and the shells are great. But of course, you got to have the filling. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make a filling with uh, uh, ricotta cheese uh, for our cannoli. So what I'm gonna do first is I've got one cup of whole milk here. I'm gonna put that in there. <clears throat> this is also this is a third of a cup. You need one and a third cup, but we split it. We're gonna take the one cup of whole milk, and I've got a quarter cup of cornstarch. Okay, we're going to get that cornstarch in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to whisk these two things together. Um, here's my whisk. Okay, cornstarch and milk to corn start Cornstarch and milk. And I'm going to whisk this together. I want to make sure that cornstarch becomes completely dissolved. And we're just going to let it sit for a few minutes, okay? Because what's going to end up happening is uh, we're thickens. going... No, it won't thicken until it's heated. Oh. So that's the next step. I just really want to get the cornstarch incorporated well into the whole milk. All right. There it is. You know what? I'm going to let this rest uh, for a few minutes, and then we'll put it on the stove in a saucepan, bring it to a heat. It will thicken. So that, that's what we're going to do with that. In the meantime, let's take a look at our other ingredients that we have here. So I've got a pound of ricotta cheese. You can either get it in uh, part skim or whole milk. The whole milk obviously is a little richer because it's got a little bit more fat in it. If you're watching your girlish figure, then you might want to go with the part skim. I'm watching my weight increase. <laughs> um, then we've got uh, the other things that are going to go in. So we've got, I've got uh, three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar here. I've got some almond extract, vanilla extract, cinnamon, and we'll put a little lemon zest in there. Isn't there okay. a, sometimes little bits of chocolate? Yes, I gotta find those. I thought <laughs> I had them. They're here somewhere. Um, so you know what, we're gonna put in some little chocolate uh, semi-sweet bits. bits too as well. Uh, so I'll get that stuff assembled. Mm -hmm. So you know what, we're gonna come, we'll come back in a few minutes and um, uh, get our, uh, sort of our milk. Okay, I uh, poured the milk and cornstarch mixture uh, that was in the bowl into the saucepan here. And I've kind of got this on a uh, little medium to medium high heat. 
so we're going to bring this up to a heat and you know we've done this with a lot of things uh, where we've added cornstarch right and it's uh it's a way to thicken things a thickening agent yeah it's a thickening agent exactly so suffering suck attached it's thickening we're gonna um essentially bring this milk up uh, in heat and as it comes up it'll start to thicken then we're gonna take it off the heat uh, and then we're gonna have to let it cool down okay um, because we don't we can't mix it with the cheese and the other milk while it's warm oh okay because okay. we don't want to melt that stuff okay so so does it have to get to like room temperature or actually cold just or? room temperature okay it doesn't have to be cool okay um, so I'm gonna keep stirring we'll come back when it's kind of starting to thicken up so everyone can kind of see right now it's still too liquid yeah it's still too Boy, it's we thickening now. yes it is you see that so I see you're vigorously stirring it I am I'm actually gonna take it off the heat Let me put a pad down okay so there it is so that's just the cornstarch and the milk and the milk wow. that's all okay good start so see how thick that is I do now the only issue right now is too that hot. it's too hot now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna let this cool but I'm gonna put a piece of plastic wrap over the top of it so you know like when you make a pudding or something that's cooked um, and then as it cools sometimes you get what they call a skin yes. that forms on the top of it here's how you can prevent that from happening by taking a piece of plastic wrap and putting it literally on top so that it's touching the it's touching the mixture the here contents. Okay. okay so that's what we're gonna do and then that will prevent it from forming a skin that skin so we're gonna just so I can peel it off easily yeah hope it okay. doesn't melt into it won't <laughs> it's not that hot yeah, no, but okay so we just found your uh, little chocolate found our little mini chocolate I got about a uh, oh maybe a half cup of the mini chocolate chips here then I've got some sliced almonds which we're gonna use to decorate we're going to put the sliced almonds on the oh, yeah. ends of the canola. That's classic, right? Yeah. So, right. okay. We'll be, so we'll come back after this is cooled and we're ready to go into next, All right. the next phase. Yeah. So this is cooled down to room temperature. And I'm going to peel back our plastic wrap that we had over there. You can see no, no skin. No skin. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to transfer this out of the pot here it's kind of thick clumpy clumpy like cream of wheat after it sat out <laughs> too long um, then but this is going to help uh, provide a nice kind of consistency so we're going to to this now add one third cup of milk okay and let's put our flavorings in. We're going to put in a little bit of cinnamon, not a lot, like a quarter of a teaspoon. Okay. Okay. So, again, not a strong spice, just something in the background. Then I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're going to put in a half a teaspoon of almond extract okay it's kind of got a sweet oh, I wonder if you could use amaretto or something like that yeah you know you could actually although amaretto is dark oh um, it would change the color yeah uh, I'm gonna put in a little lemon zest it just kind of brightens it yeah I don't know maybe oh half a teaspoon or so and that is just the skin when you talk yes. about a zest, right? Right. Just the the yellow part, not the, not the this white that they call the pith because that's that's bitter. All right, let's let's get this kind of mixed up here. And this will sort of thin out a little bit. Gonna have to 
break it up. A yeah, we're going to have to kind of work this. You could probably even use do this in a mixer if you wanted to, like an electric mixer. Do you think it cooled off too much? Mm -mm. No. No, it was, it's just at room temperature. Oh, okay. Okay. So, but I'm going to... I may put. I may actually use a mixer here. We'll see. Just to get it smoother. Clear. Yeah, I want to get it really smooth before I add the ricotta. So let's try a whisk. That spatula. I may not may not be using the right tool. So let's let's whisk this together. But it smells wonderful already with the almond and the vanilla and the. Looks like cottage cheese. Yeah, it does kind of. What was that drink you were telling me about? Oh, it's, uh, uh, Kahlua, um, vodka, and cottage cheese. It's <laughs> called the Chunky Russian. <laughs> That's not real. It's chunky Russian. Yeah, so now it's kind of getting a little... Yes, now you see it's kind of really getting... Smoothing out. Smoothing out and coming together. So then you add the... Well, the cheese, too, gets, the more you beat it, will become more liquidy and softer, too, right? Yes. The, the mascarpone, is that, or uh, not That's mascarpone. a ricotta. Ricotta, ricotta okay. yes. So here we go. Okay. So we're good there. Now we're going to add in our ricotta cheese and our powdered sugar. And how much powdered sugar was that? That was three quarters of a cup. Wow. It smells really good. It's got um, something almost, yeah, the, the citrus... Uh, splash from the lemon, lemon zest, mm -hmm. the almond. Are you getting that? Yes. There we go. Now it's getting to the consistency you desire. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really stir this nice. Well, it looks good. So this is um, uh, almost like a pudding. Like it's not um, gonna be. I mean, there aren't any other steps as far as cooling it down or anything else right no this is it it's good wow. now what we're gonna do make some room here now we're going to want to make sure I've got this blended well yeah well blended I think I'm gonna have to give this a little bit of a taste it yeah. shouldn't be super sweet because you're gonna add chocolate and um, almonds yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Pleased with the uh, yeah, filling. very good. It's su it's sweet, but you're also getting a little of the cinnamon, a little of the um, almond and the citrus. Mm -hmm. And um, you put some. Did you put van you put vanilla also? That, I did. That's just a mm -hmm. kind of another background uh, yeah. flavor. And then the chocolates, did you say, were semi-sweet? Yeah, Does those are semi-sweet. So different from bitter, or uh, different from dark? Um, or similar? Yes, and I don't know what the the difference is between dark chocolate and semi-sweet. But they're I, similar. Yes, they are. They're not overly sweet. Okay, so there's that. Now, we'll, I'm just going to kind of... Spatula here. Just throw it all in. Okay. Now here's what I'm not sure of. Exactly how many of these shells we'll be able to fill. But we're going to see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a piping bag. There's a couple different ways you can approach filling these cannolis. One is to use a piping bag. This is just a disposable one. I'm not putting a tip on it. They have those tips, you know, Ralph, that are kind of like fluted, that kind of do like, fancy like shapes. Like a hard plastic tip? Yeah. And so um, you buy these bags easily at a, any market? Yeah, any th store? they're pretty easy to find. Okay. If you don't have one, they're certainly easy to make. Many times I'll use like a zip storage bag and just cut the corner ah, okay. out. Okay. Right. So you're not using a tip on this. You don't need to. No. I'm not going to use a tip on this, but I am going to... Will, you know, you could also um, use a small 
uh, spoon to fill your cannolis mm -hmm. would be another way to do it. It seems like that could be messy. I mean, the, the bag seems like the less messy of the options, don't you think? Yeah. Okay, so now we get oh, another plate. Oh, it's out. Careful. Yes, that's okay. Do this over so that when some does drip. Okay, so we're going to take our cannoli and we're going to work that end. Then we're going to work that end. Uh -huh. See? Here we go. Whoop. I'll eat that one. Okay. Um, so the two ends get filled. And if you do it right, they'll meet in the center. Yes. And then once I get these done, I'm going to um, we'll kind of garnish the the top with the almonds with the almonds yeah on I the think sides sometimes people do um like shaved chocolate maybe you could do shaved yes you could you could do shaved chocolate you, i've seen like kind of these those chocolate oh i call them little chocolate sprinkles but there's probably another mm -hmm. name for them Look so yeah isn't that beautiful good. so we'll come back so i'm going to keep on filling get here get these filled up and come back for the last look yeah. at the oh, finished wow. product yeah. Those look great. We're coming down to the end. Here's what I'm doing. I've got these, you know, slivered almonds, and I'm just putting them kind of on the ends, the open ends. The open ends, okay. Yeah, and they just kind of stick to the filling. So here's what they look like. Aren't they pretty? So this is your work plate, and this is your finish this plate. This is my finish plate, and it's not quite finished. So I'm going to do here is we're going to take just a little bit of powdered sugar and this is sort of the, you know, finishing touch. And I think that a lot of cannolis, at least that I've seen in the bakery, usually have a powdered sugar dusting on the top. A classic. Oh, look how nice those Aren't look. Aren't like those little pretty? Snowfall. Yeah. Remember when we were in Philadelphia, we went to a place that was bragging about being the, the they, best cannolis in the city or yes, something? Yes, we were in downtown, and they had a sign on the door. Something Brothers. I can't remember the bakery. Trimini or Trimini Brothers? Yeah, maybe? Trimini Brothers or something. Our friends in Philly, you can let us know. But um, uh, they were so friendly, and they, yeah, they, they and were they were really big too, weren't and they? And they were, and they were they were delicious. Um, we did go in to see. They said they were the best, and they were very good. Um, well, this, these look great too. So these are ours. So here they are, folks. We have a wonderful. I mean, it's just such a decadent, classic dessert, classic Italian dessert, the cannoli. Uh, we want to thank our dear friends, Char and Tommy. Uh, this is Tommy's family recipe. Sapiens. Yeah, is their last for name. Uh, making the um, uh, cannoli shells for us. And um, we had an assembly line of friends that day too. We did. There was a lot of us, and I, like I said, we made a quite a mm -hmm. quite a big amount. But anyways. We had a great time putting this all together, making the filling, and... We're taking it to a Tupperware party tonight. Yes, we are, <laughs> so I hope I should put it in Tupperware so these stay nice and fresh for the party tonight. So, anyways, you know what? Thank you for being a part of this one, and uh, we had a good time. Hope you had a good time being with us. Happy canoodling with your cannolis. <laughs> Holy cannoli. Holy Here cannoli. Here we are. We'll see you next time on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody.